You are listening to the Daily Gold Podcast, covering precious metals, the junior mining sector, and global capital markets for intelligent investors. Now, here is your host, Jordan Roy Byrne. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Gold Podcast. This is being recorded on Friday, June 30th, 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in. With me today, one of my absolute favorite guests. We had him on in April. He's Gary Tanashian, editor-publisher of a great newsletter, Notes from the Rabbit Hole. And we had him on back in the spring, April, as I said. And he was turning bullish. In the big picture, he was talking about uh, you know the fundamentals coming into view for the gold stocks and the potential for a real bull market coming on. But at that time, he was also noting, you know, we could see this really good rally in the stock market he was one of the early ones who pointed that out and he's been right about that and uh gary it's great to have you back and i wanted to have you on because i think the macro market setup now i mean with respect to how precious metals might be impacted i mean you tell me but it seems a little confusing to me because if we're looking at the economic data especially in recent days yes it's generally weak but you do see some strong pieces of data here and there and it it, you you know you're looking at the economic data you know nothing screams recession maybe in the next quarter or maybe in the second to next quarter so you know it, it just it looks like the recession keeps getting pushed out but at the same time you know i'm looking at the last couple days i mean earlier this week i'm thinking they're going to take gold below 1900 i mean end of the month end of the quarter we're going to see this huge dumping they couldn't do it. I mean, gold had bounced off 1900 twice. So to me, it's kind of confounding how well gold is holding up, you know, despite the fact that there's no recession and the Fed says, oh, we still got to keep hiking. I mean, you you tell me what's going on here. Uh, what's going on is Goldilocks, which is benefiting certain areas of the stock market uh, more than others. Uh, tech is leading inflation despite some headlines that pop up or or the fed chief getting behind a microphone and uh talking tough inflation signals are easing um the fed is still hawkish but we're we're in the uh the mushy i think ending phases of the cycle at least the hiking cycle um yeah, and as far as gold goes, it's just been a normal correction to begin with. I think it's it's in a new bull market leg, as I have thought for some time now. Uh, so, you know, on a bigger picture, since it uh, broke through thirteen seventy eight, I believe it was back in twenty nineteen. That that started the new bull market, and the correction we have now. While I'm looking for eighteen fifty nine. 200 day moving average which is trending up i may or may not get that may or may not get a stab down below that um we are looking for a higher low to the march low and that is all that's needed for gold to stay completely intact i don't feel like it should be getting murdered right now there's you know so much noise in the stock market and um yeah it's bullish out there and the speculators are taking over and that's great because we anticipated it. And, you know, I try to gingerly play it as best I can uh, while realizing that I don't think it's a long-term thing. It's a bear market rally still. I'm starting to get some feedback on that, some dismissive feedback that, you know, why don't you just get off that and admit it's a bull market. And uh, (laughs) I can't do that when The original projection was for a strong bear market rally, and that's still ongoing. So I think gold is just biding time. I I really don't like the level of micromanagement that that, um, so many people do. They focus on gold like it has an imperative to go up, right? Jordan, it's it's in a higher highs, higher lows, uh, intermediate uptrend from November. What more could we ask? And while speculation, whether it's the AI stuff or whatever the speculation du jour comes up each week, um, dumb money is way over bullish. This thing's taking on a a terminal look to it. Um, But 
you know, it is wildly bullish until it won't be someday. And uh, why should gold get destroyed in that situation? It's just taking the normal co correction that it would take. Um, you know, so it eased back to 1900. Uh, I've been allowing for all the way into the 1820s, and that would keep my pulse normal uh, as far as being a gold bull is concerned. And um, I feel like everything's on track, despite all the speculation. I, I, gold was, I don't think it has the elements in the market right now to absolutely hammer it because stocks are so bullish and the economy is so okay and the fed is so implied to be hawkish long answer but you, you, yeah let me just get a quick a quick follow-up on my part because uh, there's a couple more things i want to get to but okay so if the s p or generally we're in this kind of goldilocks phase wouldn't you expect gold to get hit harder than it has been hit i mean it's barely i don't know what it's you know i low 1900s but it's it's i mean gary it's it's like six or seven percent from a new all-time high i mean this thing right. is i mean this thing is you would think okay we're going into goldilocks if goldilocks continues well i guess yeah your answer would be it goldilocks comes down is, is temporary now you know for you me and other individual humans temporary can seem like forever but it's an interim thing and so you know, my operating plan has been that Goldilocks is interim and it's going to morph. And the question I have, and it's even more of a question lately because I've been expecting Goldilocks to transition to a deflation scare. So a, a logical progression from the previous inflation uh, signaling and, and fears to this Goldilocks environment, which was completely logical and normal as a transition into a coming liquidation. That has been my favored plan. And I, well, I don't know, maybe I'm 50-50 by now. Till recently that has been uh, well favored and then slightly favored. And now, you know, the more I look at certain things in the market, I'm wondering if Goldilocks is going to rotate out for a bit, the yield curve bottoms and starts to steepen and the yield curve steepens under inflationary pressure. And I'll get back to that in a minute if I don't remind me. Um, so maybe there's room for a rotation into commodities. And insofar as so many people consider gold a commodity and they treat gold stocks like commodity producers, um, why wouldn't there be a rotation into that stuff before the broad market rally ends? And as far as the what I'm saying with the yield curve, um, the, it, the yield curve flattening and deep inversion has been very Goldilocks friendly. A uh, yield curve flattening generally runs with the Goldilocks environment with uh, pleasant, pleasantly uh, disinflationary uh, economic signaling. But when it bottoms, it's probably going to bottom and jerk around uh, with some violent head spinning signals. Um, but when it starts to steepen again, I'm really wondering seriously now if we're not going to have an inflationary steepener as a bookend to the deflationary steepener that started everything back in, in 2020. So if you'll recall, the yield curve steepened at in, in the, the acute crisis, the deflationary crisis that was going on in the markets, the yield curve spiked upward. But then came our inflating heroes to the rescue. And that thing ground around and eventually the steepener ground itself into an inflationary steepener. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to talk too, too much if you want me to um, explain the inflationary versus deflationary steepeners i i can do that but no, I, I i actually no i would love for you to get into that because that's something i wanted to ask you about because i was thinking about oh. that i was thinking about that yesterday like what if the scenario because it just you know it, it, and i've been saying this and lots of other people 
Like, yeah, the economy's going to roll over and the yield curve will steepen. You know, the bond yields are going to come down. The Fed's going to be forced to cut, which may happen eventually. But looking at bond markets, I was looking at the charts of yields and I was thinking, yeah, these things, I mean, the 10 year yield looks like it can, you know, make new highs. And I was reading someone just talking about, well, and it just the reasons why inflation is just not going to come down. It's going to remain really, really sticky and that that's a big contrary. You know, that could be a big contrary thing. The person was making that point. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, yeah, in that scenario, what if you get like, how would an inflationary steepener work out? Please explain that and what kind of time frame, you know, that could sustain itself. Okay. First, I want to make the point that um, it would be a nice bookend, an equal and opposite situation to the 2020 situation where the thing steepened deflationary ground around, ground everybody to shreds, and then then the Fed jumped into inflationary action, as did global central banks. And there we go. You know, uh, the government threw in the, uh, the fiscal inflation, and then that thing resumed steepening under inflationary pressures. So the difference being yields were dropping impulsively with the steepening, the deflationary steepening, Nominal 10, let's use the 10 and two year as an example. Nominal 10 was uh, was dropping impulsively. We're going to zero. You know, the bond market is 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 unbelievably bullish, uh, blowing off. And that's when the, the Fed sprang into action with all the money printing and esoteric tools for for printing a bull market the market finally caught on that this is inflation which we knew it was when they when they began the operations that was going to uh eventually come out in the market signaling and that signaling was a, a long steepening in the yield curve and that happened with the best of the inflation trades and commodities and uh some global markets and the stock market the u.s stock market the whole damn thing just inflated um, and long-term yields were going up faster than short-term yields because people weren't in the liquidity of the short term. Um, they were getting the heck out of there and deploying into, into uh, inflation protection, whatever that may be, you know. Um, they, they were uh, abandoning risk management and getting into the markets. And so the, where did they come out of? They came out of savings out of T-bills, out of short-term bonds. And, uh, you know, we had our little inflationary uh, episode and associated trades. I can pull up a chart here. I just want to see. So that thing in commodities, for example, it, it blew off in, well, about a year ago. And it's been going down ever since. And that's been the, the as the, uh, the Goldilocks situation uh came to being because before that tech had greatly underperformed had a bad bear market or a worse bear market than the the small cycle that broad stock markets took uh in 2022 so they were due for relief inflation signaling has backed off or moderated at least and is slowly backing off um and now we get to a point where is this disinflation going to morph directly deflationary with Armageddon coming next week? Well, you know, it should, <laughs> the way I see it, it's, we're running on the dumbest money and speculation and a lot of hope when cash is paying 5% and it's a no lose situation, but, um, you know, it, it just, it, we're, we're shifting and, um, the Fed could be behind the eight ball here still, or perceived behind the eight ball, whatever it is. Um, we've still got the backward looking GDP data and um, inflation isn't dropping fast enough in the backward looking uh, signals that they that they uh, tend to go by. So uh, I just talked myself into a loop there, and can you get me back on track? Of so, well, so I, I think what you're you're saying is there's a possibility. Well, I mean, I don't want to put even maybe I am putting words in your mouth, but there's a possibility where 
you know, there's the one scenario where, you know, we have Goldilocks, but then Goldilocks turns into you get the the uh, deflationary or disinflationary right. steepener where, you know, uh, the two year basically starts plunging because people are right. worried about recession. Yeah. Of course, that's bullish for precious metals. But you're you're saying before that happens, there's also the scenario where first we get uh, inflationary right. steepener like that. Yeah. That actually comes first. Right. So and be, because stock- basically because inflation expectations and, and I'm just explaining in that scenario, maybe the Fed gets off another hike or two in the next couple months. But then inflation stays where it is and people get worried, you know, the market gets worried and inflation expectations start rising. And then the yield curve steepens because of that, because short well, rates don't move, but then long rates start going up. So, I mean, am well, I wrong about that? Or, or you, No, you're- I just am not being as logical about it as you are. Uh, I don't even know why. I didn't know why Goldilocks was coming and why tech was going to outperform. I just know it had been drubbed. And uh, all the sexy stuff from 2020, the uh, the work at home software uh, as a service technology stuff, remote tools, that stuff got killed after its bubble in 2020. And it was due for a bounce. And, um, you know, with inflation expectations moderating, that was so much the better. We could spin a, a little Goldilocks tail and enjoy that for a few months. And that is persisting, but the market, may not top it may just have another rotation in it i just feel like and i don't know if it's based on any hard uh macroeconomic evidence like you're talking about it just could be time i mean if you look at the uh, crb index that thing's been robo trending gently down and actually in a flag for um a year so when will it be time and um where it's just time for a trade. And I actually got, you know, jazzed up on this uh, yesterday when I, w- I did a, an in-depth uh, look into oil and gas. And uh, we had an update at the website and um, it compelled me to hold two equity positions in that um, area that I have and even buy some oil even though the thing is robo trending down right along with the CRB index, as we've been noting every week in, in NFTRH, um, certainly not a technical reason for it, but I just get the feeling the last hurrah of the speculative um, bear market relief rally or sentiment event could, could see a rotation into the inflation trades again. Then, <laughs> then I just like 2020 morphed from a deflationary steepener to a, an inflationary. I like the way markets often um, almost magically uh, bookend. You know, I'd love to see that closed out with a steepener that that eventually morphs from inflationary to deflationary. So when when the speculation in the broad markets and you and I both know it's it's getting silly out there in some areas. You know, people are back in the market. They're going to make coin, uh, you know, make the bank and, and you know, whatever other silly terms uh, traders use that uh, when they get too much bravado built up in them. No fear out there right now. The, uh, the VIX is on. Excuse me one sec. A little interruption. Oh, no worries. White wife giving funny looks and wondering what who I'm talking to. Yeah, who is this weird guy on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> and then I wave her away and she still stands there and looks and gives a, a quizzical look to me. Um, so I'm just seeing things as a sentiment event, not what? really backed by economic inputs or, you know, it's time to tune the fed noise down a little bit and tune the economic signals down and just let the market play to its animal spirits and its rotations yes. so let me yeah sorry to cut you off. i just want to jump in because you mentioned the stock market and i do want to ask you about that and maybe posit this scenario do we need to see 
like let's say the S and P goes to five thousand, you know, it makes a new high. Everybody's like, oh, it's a new bull. Like people are saying that now, but I mean, you're talking about forty eight hundred, which I mean, that's ba- I mean, you're basically hairs away from a new all time high. But what if we see the S and P go to let you know five thousand fifty one hundred and which is only a couple hundred points more than your scenario, yeah. but it's that scenario that like really sucks people in. Uh, you know, you, you have this you have this rally in hard assets basically that you're talking about that could be setting up. And so that happens, but then the S and P peaks at like fifty one. It makes like a new high that turns out to be a false new high. But you, Gary, you know that new high is gonna get everybody really bold up. You know, maybe yeah. the ec- maybe the economic data is not weak enough for I mean, nobody's thinking about a recession at that point. I mean, I'm just adding to your scenario, but how would that because I, I like I really feel like it's not, you know, because people are saying, well, it's a new bull market. Yeah, they but, are. I mean, but I mean, you can have I mean, I guess you can have a, a new bull market doesn't mean it's going to go up for five years. I mean, maybe, you know, this thing bottomed in October of 22. Um. You well, know, Joel, I, I, I just, I think people talking about a new bull market, bear market rally. To me, it's just like it's semantics because we're not going to have like a two oh, yeah. or three. We're not going to have a two or three year new bull market here. Well, here's the thing: if last year was a bear market, then a test of forty eight hundred would, by definition, be a bull market. Last year was a small, moderate, not even worthy of calling itself a bear market. It was a bear cycle. And this thing has the potential to erase that and then bring on the FOMO that you're talking about right now. You know, happy days are here again. And I've been allowing for a throw over to it to tick a a new all time high. What a great thing that would be. Um, What a great signal. Now, of course, if then it just keeps going, I'm wrong. And I've never been afraid to admit when I'm wrong and I won't this time either. But I look back. And when I was projecting a rally back in last November for, I mean, too many reasons to to go into here, but uh, one of a major one was sentiment. The overbearer sentiment was not sustainable. And so we were going to grind to a rally. It has exceeded my favored target, which was 4,300. And so now we're in the wild blue yonder. We're in the great wide open here. And like you say, Whoa, it would be a little bull market. What would this little bull market do to sentiment that's already way over bullish? Uh, it would send it into bull killer extremes. Or I'm just somebody who started out saying it was a bear market rally and is still saying that. And, you know, uh, I'm unrealistic. I need to get with the program. I'm starting to hear some input like that where. I'm being told in a couple of comments, Gary, why don't you just uh, get with it and you know stop fighting it? It's a bull market. Well, I'm not fighting it. I'm long. Uh, also enjoying cash, which is paying out higher, higher and higher uh, income. And so I actually want the market to keep going up because that's the way I'm positioned, and I'm under no pressure. Uh, unless I start shorting at 4,800 or something like that, and the thing just keeps going up, which is you know, if I short at forty eight hundred, that will be its its uh, license to go up and make me a yeah. person. <laughs> yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. The right yeah. mindset for that. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? It's all on the table. But um, I, so I'm not going to try to be a bearish hero. Uh, I'm going to. The plan now is to to, you know, right now I'm speculating and and riding along with this thing. I added several stocks this week, whether it was in uh, gold stocks or um, healthcare stocks, uh, premier semiconductor stock that got banged back on some China hype and uh, and several others. Um, I'm trying, but I also have commodity resource stocks and energy. So, and, a, and then a crap load of cash as I will have through this whole thing. So I will underperform by definition, the S and P 500, if it's going up there, because I'm, you know, I don't buy it and I'm not going to chase it with my, my real money. 
And uh, that's what I manage by, and that's what I show in, in NFTRH, and I'm a conservative person. So I'm not going to, just because dumb money is, is leading it and it's succeeding, I'm not going to be dumb money. I'm going to know that I'm running with dumb money and continue to manage risk. Um, but yeah, I think it, what I want to do is wait for, wait for the t next target. And there's, there's certainly no, no need for the S and P to get that high, but you know, I feel like it's, I'm looking at the chart now, the weekly chart we took out, we held support, uh, in the 4,100 area and we took out clear resistance at 4,300 and this nice fat up candle this week to 4452. So like you say, it's not that far up. <laughs> so uh, dumb money could could bring that on in no time. And like silver in 2011, you, you wouldn't want to be shorting that thing all the way up to 50. But then when, when it ends, it ends. So I'd love to see a mania driven uh, parabola or something along those lines to to give a signal that, okay, um, time to start planning for the next phase, which is for this thing to to uh, exhaust, roll over, or more likely just reverse with extreme violence. But again, that's just me and my my fertile imagination right now. But I I feel like I have the credibility as someone who has not been bearish since October, but it, who was projecting, and it's all in writing publicly, uh, projecting the reasons why a rally is probably coming. Uh, and at first I saw it as Q1, uh, Q4 uh, 2022 and Q1 2023. Now we're about to poke into second half of 2023, which was longer than I projected, but it's, it's still normal. And so I can talk bearish, I can talk about the dangers and risks ahead because I was not bearish and I'm not just trying to warn people perpetually. Right now it's bullish. There's a rally on, I have no short positions. I have long positions and um, there we have it. But I, and risk is rising. All those words are a way of saying risk is rising every step of the way that the market rises. Right. And I, I mentioned um, April when we, I interviewed you, but I think it was earlier than that. It might've been, uh, last November, December. Um, you know, when I, when I had you on, you were talking about, we could see this more than a rebound in the stock market. So I want to get that out there, but, but Gary, but, but before we close, just one more thing on precious metal. So it sounds like you're, at, you know, there, you're potentially constructive in the, you know, on a short to medium term, because, um, you might get this, in, you, 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 it's Goldilocks now, but it might morph inflationary. Right. And I think that the the gold set gold, especially silver, keep an eye on silver for its leadership um, and the silver gold ratio, obviously. Um, I'm expecting, I'm leaning to it all going back up in the next phase or rotating away from tech so that that may start to underperform, although there's still no nothing in the charts that says that has started to happen. Um, Goldilocks is still there, but it, when the curve starts to steepen, I am coming down on the 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 view that um, it's going to steepen inflationary at first, and so we're going to get a little happy days are here again in commodities and commodity related equities. And um, as the S&P 500, and again, this is just one man's brain thinking in too much detail and that there will certainly have to be revisions to this. But as the, the broad stock market sucks them all back in and happy days are here again and the financial media is talking about the soft landing that the Fed engineered and you know we all live happ happily ever after, uh, and commodities have had a suitable bounce, then comes the turbulence and then comes the uh, probably a, a really uh, spiky volatile period in the yield curve where it spikes up and down and doesn't know what the hell it's doing. 
And then when the, the steepener resolves from that point, it will be in a deflationary suit rather than an inflationary suit. So I think we're gonna get some inflation trade action here. Could be wrong, but that's where I'm leaning at this point. And it's contrary to, to my favorite view right up literally to, to this week. Um, there's a good chance of it. I don't think we're rolling right over into uh, to a mass liquidation. I think we're, we may have one more rotation and then um, the inflation trades maybe, you know, give the finger to the Fed and get a little sentiment rally going. And then when that exhausts and wherever S&P 500 is at such time, that says that, you know, rethinks itself and realizes it's sponsored by the dumbest money, the, the, the mobs just trying to play catch up and uh, FOMOing. And then we reverse downward in, in prices, upward in the, uh, upward under deflationary pressure in the yield curve and gold stocks may well have, you know, they may have a really serious rally here for the next several months. At once they find a bottom, a local bottom uh, to this normal correction. If that all plays out, then they will be vulnerable to one more big hit uh, in the bull market. But um, I think there's going to be a lot of fun first, but we'll have to see how it plays out. All right. Sounds good, Gary. Thanks so much for coming on today. Uh, before we hang up here, please uh, provide your website and Twitter so people can follow you and subscribe. Sure. Well, Twitter is uh, capital letters N F as in Frank T R H G T small letters. I'm not sure if the case sensitive uh, has anything to do with it or not, it's, but it's N F T R H G T um, at, at that. <laughs> um, the website is N F T R H.com. Check it out. There's uh, some public material there posted routinely and uh, let's take it from there. All right, Gary, thanks so much for coming on. Love your work and analysis. You're an antidote to, I, I mean, I want to say gold bug nonsense, but I don't want to tarnish the, the gold bug, just an antidote yeah. to just general market nonsense exactly. that's out there. <laughs> yeah, I pick on gold bugs too much. It's a little bit of a chronic thing. I have to work on that. <laughs> But um, thanks for having me, Jordan. Thank you for tuning into the Daily Gold Podcast. For more interviews, editorials, and analysis, log on to thedailygold.com. And for premium coverage of precious metals and the best junior mining companies, visit thedailygold.com forward slash premium.